Hi, I'm Jacob Cebulski. Welcome to Rapid Miner Data Mining and Data Visualization. So what I'm going to do next is to actually decide what attributes I will use for my modeling, uh, for the creation of the predicted model, and uh, what is the attributes that I want to predict. Let's start with the second task. I'm going to look at changing the type of um, those attributes. And I'm going to set the role of an attribute. Okay, uh, what attribute I want to predict clearly is the subrogation label. As you can see, I'm now connecting the port, the output port of RID CSV. So all observations will be redirected to my set role operator and I'm going to connect the output port so in the middle I'm going to say what attribute attribute name or the variable subrogation and what I what should be its role at the moment it's a regular it's any variable which could be used as input as a predictor or independent variable. I'm going to turn it into label. A label means it's a dependent variable. If I run this mini model or workflow, you can see we have all the variables as before. The claim number is special is unique ID, but subrogation uh, attribute is now a label. You can see in great letters it says a label. You can see that in statistics, subrogation is special. It's a label, a target for my prediction. And let's select some variables. Not all of those variables are useful. So select attributes. Now I'm going to connect it differently. I'm dragging it and I'm going to meet the, connect, the line connecting the operator with the output port, the line becomes thicker. When I let go, you can see it's connected automatically. And some of the attributes are definitely not useful. Um, let's see. Uh, for example, the text description of the case, unless I do some text analytics, that's not useful. Um, then the claim number. It's a unique ID, so we can't really use it for any prediction. Um, every observation has a unique number. Um, also, fraud is determined much, much later in the case. So when someone lodges a claim, I will not know if it's fraudulent or not. Um, subrogation is something um, I want to learn about. The vehicle is a question. Are we going to know about the vehicle being involved? In, uh, in a particular injury or not. Uh, usually we'll know it straight away from the text or from the form on which the claimant is going to tick. So let's assume we have this information. So the body part, cause of injury, uh, nature of injury, subrogation, and vehicle flag will use in, my, in building my predictive model. Okay, let's run very quickly and we can see we have fewer variables, fewer attributes, same number of observations, and we have two special um, variables, the claim number and subrogation. Um, did we include the claim number? Let's see, let's check. Claim number is not used, but since it was an IT, it will be shown but not used as um, the input for my the training of the model. So um, what I'm going to do next is to build the model based on the past observations. So if you know the past, if you use the past information, you could predict the future. And to do that, I'm going to rely on Rapid Miner to create a predictive model which model I'm going to use. Uh, we have a number of modeling options here. 
uh, some models are predictive, some use for association, correlation, similarities. I'm going to build a predictive model, and again we have lots of options. Um, some are neural networks, some are rules or trees. I'm going to use a lazy model. It's called KNN. It's lazy because it doesn't do much. It simply records all of the past examples and their classification. And then if we see a new observation which is not classified, um, RapidMiner is going to try to match the pattern of uh, variable values with the pattern of all the past variable values and find the closest matching observations. Um, how many? We specify. Let's make it five. And if three of them are going to say, yep, this case um, it's a good uh, candidate for subrogation, that's the classification of the observation we're going to use here. Okay, let's actually do this and run it and see what happens. So I do a little, I run and investigate a little. Um, if I don't like the way those lines are connected, I can press shift on the keyboard and then drag the line and space them better. Run it. I can see examples exactly as I pass them in and that's the model. It's not very exciting. It simply says uh, what are the selection of parameters are picked. What we need to do is to apply this model to something new. And um, I actually have a data set which is a scoring data set. If I were to open it, I'll see um, I'll, I'll do that in a minute. Uh, you'll see there is a data which is not labeled, data which is not classified. And so if I want to classify this new set of observations, all I can do is to simply use that model on the new data and it will be classified automatically. Let's do it. Uh, it's a CSV file. So let's again CSV we, not, we want to read it. Let's use the wizard again very quickly. Uh, the last directory was MIS171, data, workers' compensation, scoring data. It's called scoring because um, if uh, it's sort of traditional name. Scoring means application of a model to the data to label it. Again, it's a comma separated, exactly the same variables as before. Uh, the first column is a name, yep. Um, the claim number is integer, so we have to make sure that we use exactly the same um, uh, specification of attributes as an ID. Polynomial, 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 polynomial. The vehicle flag is binomial and it's an attribute. Okay, what's missing is subrogation. That's something I want to predict. Now, we've got the data. Uh, I'm going to apply the model to this data. So clearly there must be something called apply. Maybe there's something called scoring uh, as well. But I'm going to simply, I can see it's a group of operators for scoring. That one is apply the model. So rather than the model being shown on output, I'm going to say, yep, connect it here. That wasn't very interesting, so I'm going to delete it. This is unlabeled data. Unlabeled, and this will be labeled data. And if I want to see the model, I can see it again, even though it wasn't very exciting. I use Shift to move the data, space it better. Let's see what happens. Let's run it. Okay, uh, that's the model. This is the example set. And now it's exciting. Um, the data is only 1,400 examples and 32, uh, which is the data from 
this others comma separated uh, file. Um, there are claims that have never been seen before and they had no label. There was no information about subrogation. This is actually the prediction of those claims um, for those claims. Um, we ignored the adjuster nodes, their text. Um, we could possibly remove that. Um, but the model knew only how to process body parts, nature of injury, cause of injury, and whether or not the vehicle was involved. Now what happens is that each of this uh, combination of um, variable values was then used as a match against all my past examples. And um, then basically we looked at five closest examples. And so clearly here four of them said that there is no subrogation. One of them said, yep, there was a subrogation, which means that it was decided between the five of them, zero is my prediction. Whereas here it was the opposite. Uh, four of them said, yep, uh, it's quite likely um, it'll be subrogated because those four observations were classified that there was subrogation happening. One had no classification for subrogation. So four had one, one had zero. 20%, 80%. Uh, here, all five, the closest, agreed that there's no subrogation happening. So we have zero. So we have here sort of a, a confidence weighing. It's um, basically um, those examples which are closest, in, in our case is five, are voting for the outcome. And the vote is shown here. So we can see results. Now what we don't see is whether or not there is a, a good outcome or bad, good prediction or bad prediction. So that's something we need to look at next. Uh, we will be looking at validating the model or determining if the model is correct or not correct or better how correct it is.